21st Century Conversations. I'm Enzing Ashani. Our conversation this evening is about learning disabilities. For every parent, for every teacher, for every grandparent who's taking care of their children, learning disabilities has become an issue of concern. We have attention deficit disorder, we have hyperactivity attention deficit, and we have dyslexia, among others. But those are the three things we're going to talk about tonight. Susanna, do you know how your grandson was diagnosed? Did he, was he diagnosed in school, or was there some special place he was taken to? Uh, this is one of three grandsons mm -hmm. of, in one family and he has multiple problems and what I would like to ask, uh, do these problems usually go together? This child when he was two, three year, years old had incredible temper tantrums he also uh, turned out to have f food allergies. He is almost completely deaf on one ear. On the other ear, he has uh, somewhat impaired hearing, but there with a hearing aid, he can function. And I am not sure how, but he was uh, diagnosed as being dyslexic. Mm. Oh, so, okay. hard of hearing, temper tantrums, uh, food allergies, and dyslexia. I, I Do they wish... all go together? Is this <laughs> well, an unfortunate collusion of circumstances? Your grandchild's not the only one, and I'm sure the Shea was going to talk much more about the comorbidity of, of, of different disabilities. Unfortunately, if you have one, it doesn't prevent you from having many. Um, and and, and like yes, there there are there are children who have many disabilities. For example, the the uh, comorbidity between ADHD and dyslexia or a learning disability is really quite high. I've heard it as as high as fifty percent. Exactly. Um, so so the so there are those those situations. Um, food allergies is something that is in yet addition to to the, the learning disabilities that your grandchild has. I think it's very important. And again, um, what we've heard here is early diagnosis and early intervention because it really does make a difference. Uh, the other thing is it's very important to be aware to give the child the name of the diagnosis because children get very worried it's so bad it can't yes. be named. So to be able to say this is what you have um, and this is what it involves and this is what we're doing to help it. And the other really important thing is I, I'm a parent and I know that when your child has something, you really worry. Sometimes I just worry too much, but we worry. Mm -hmm. But it's so, it's very, very important not to so be focused that your child has tutoring or worries 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There has to be another part of that child's life. Yes. Where yes. he finds something, it's a sport, it's art, it's music, that he or she enjoys, does by choice, and can be successful in. And also, just what Bennett was saying, is to be hopeful and positive and realize that this child can have a wonderful future. Yes, and as you said, there are many, many prominent people who are very successful who are dys dyslexic or who have other forms of disabilities and they cope. So as a parent, I would say to parents watching that, First thing, there are many things being done for, for these children and that you as a parent can work with the professionals to help your child and to inspire your child and give your child hope and let the child know that as a team you can overcome some of these difficulties and function very effectively. Charles Schwab is certainly a very successful person. Do either of you have any questions for the doctors? I, I am just so thrilled to have an opportunity to, to be here with them. We had a chance to speak outside. Uh, I, I am I am interested in, in the course of of the, the prognosis for children who who have identified been identified earlier um, rather than later. Um, for example, our our most often for ADHD we receive referrals uh, in kids between first and third grade. Periodically we get them later, uh, but most often we see them early. Um, we also seem educationally that they seem to have a better track 
when they're identified earlier. I'm concerned about what happens when they leave after school because I've seen some of the statistics of, of kids with ADHD uh, for later in life. And I'm just wondering if you have any information regarding that. I, I don't think that uh, there are some long-term studies, but, but I don't think there are any that have addressed that specific question. Okay. I think we know a little bit more about about the issues in dyslexia. You might want to yeah. address those. Um, the question was what happens after yeah. school. Right. Well, yes. After their schooling is complete. Um, for, so, for the so majority after the 12th grade. Right. Yes. Um, well, what we know, first of all, is that we are very good, uh, schools are very good. Ben and I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> schools are very good about remediating the ability to read accurately. We haven't learned quite as much about teaching children to read automatically or fluently. And that's one of the bases for uh, two new studies that we have to see if a new treatment can help with that. Well, how about functioning, as, as Bill is saying, after you finish school, how about getting a job yeah. and functioning? Well, you know what? That's up to society. Because there's such a misunderstanding in society and a stigma. The students themselves who have gone through very good educational programs who have received accommodations, they can do anything. I see. They, well, and they are, really and they really question, are, yes. but society has often such a misunderstanding. They think dyslexia means you're not smart, or you're trying to game the system, or you're not yeah. motivated. What's been very important, for example, the ability now to do functional brain imaging, to see the brain at work, is to have a hidden disability, have a visible sign. So nobody can say, well, you're not motivated. Uh -huh. So which is why it is so important that we do programs like this, that we help people to understand exactly what right. this is, and that we can, if, when children are diagnosed early and they're in a school system that have all these various support systems and processes that the children can be helped to learn and function, that they can go on to have having productive lives.